Hey, welcome everybody. This is Chad Jordan, Director of Marketing for Digital Services at Sport Clips. This is another edition of our Hall of Fame podcast. And what we're doing with these podcast episodes is we're really going around the country and unpacking the different stories that make up sport clips, the different, uh, the unique approaches to life and career and all of that stuff as it unfolds. And so uh, today I have with me a very special guest and I'm going to have her introduce herself. Thank you, Chad. Uh, my name is Jessica Sanders. I am a area manager for Team Bailey out of the Charlotte, North Carolina uh, region. We have uh, currently four stores. Um, what uh, four stores? You're an area manager. Is your background? Uh, what's your background? Are you stylist by trade or? So what I normally share with my clients when I have this conversation um, is that, that this is my third career. Okay. My first career, I spent 10 years in the Army. Oh, all right. I was a construction engineer for six of those 10 years and then realized that uh, construction is probably not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, so I better come up with a plan B. So you did this midstream while in the service? I kind of did, okay. yeah. It was, a, it was about some good space and timing that happened and then um i spent 10 years in and got out in 2003 after mm -hmm. my mom passed away mm -hmm. not because of my mom passing away but that um so I was, you were in the army during 9 11. i was wow i was actually pregnant with my youngest son were, uh, you, were you here were you stationed in the states I was at the stationed time stationed in fort leonard wood missouri okay i was getting ready for work i was about seven months pregnant six months pregnant mm -hmm. I remember coming out, looking at the news. Um, we immediately went on lockdown, yep. and I was transferred over to Building One, which is the main building on post. And I was, uh, I was put in a position down in the basement where I had to check all the IDs of all of the major players on post, wow. uh, making sure that people who were in the meeting rooms, like what we're sitting in today, yeah. they were, we're authorized to be to there. Be there. Uh -huh. Yes, because no one at the time we we didn't know what was going on. We sure did. Where the attacks were coming from and what more could be looming and i'm actually from that area okay so that originally. was going to be my next question because there is a little bit of an accent but maybe you just picked that up from being in north carolina but where yeah tell me where you're I from i am originally from new jersey okay uh, jersey girl i am right. and from the jersey shore oh, there, oh, there's wow. a little show if you've ever yeah, heard yeah, of it yeah, but just a little um that's where I'm, I'm actually from where that is taped okay. that is taped in seaside heights which mm -hmm. is just over the bridge from tom's river new jersey that's where i was uh, where I graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was that brought a lot of mixed emotions. Yeah. You're trying to put in phone calls. You're trying to talk to your family. Oh, right. And you phone lines were and down. Friends and family that worked in the family. city. Yeah. Yes. So it was, uh, it was a scary time. It was a scary time to be a soldier, even though yeah. I was pregnant. That's what I'm saying. That's, and cr so, that's um, just crazy timing. That Why, why, were you, why had you joined the Army? Had there been a father or a relative? Or I have anybody? family members who were in the military, um, but... I didn't really know what I wanted to do with mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. I knew that college wasn't for me, and so I thought I was from a small town. I am not from a small town. Uh -huh. and so You've seen some small towns now. I, now I have, yeah. yes. And so I thought I dated a guy, and he went in the Army, and I'm thinking, you know what? If this guy can do it, I mm -hmm. know I can do mm -hmm. it. So I signed on the dotted line at 17. My mom had a co-sign well, for me. I was going to say, yeah, I didn't think that was My mom co-signed for right. me. And then I graduated in, um, <laughs> I never have a hard time remembering the two most important dates in Sport Clips history, which is when um, our first store opened in 1993, because mm -hmm. that's when I graduated from high school. Wow. And the first franchise was in 1995, because mm -hmm. that's when my oldest son was born. Wow. Nice. So I always sound like I know all this Sport yeah, yeah. Clips trivia, but... Um, so it was nice to sport clips to time everything absolutely. around major events in your life I mean, around me is right, really yeah, what exactly, it is yeah. so um, I spent 10 years in the military um, I got out of the military and I did what most soldiers do is I transitioned into a management position mm -hmm. I did uh, office management and some production uh, scheduling wh where is this lots of I got out of the military and I transitioned to Savannah Georgia okay um, Cheaper cost of living, nice warm weather, so I was there had for you about. Been, had you been stationed in Fort Benning or anywhere no, around there? No, I was. Or? I was um, through a series of unfortunate events and Lemony Snicket. Uh -huh. I uh, I followed a gentleman who okay. led me to that area, Savannah, Georgia. So All right. Savannah, uh -huh. Georgia, five years, lots of different jobs. I worked for large corporations. I worked for small mom and pops. Uh, then I moved to the Charlotte area and. Um, 
I did the same thing. I stayed in management. It was comfortable. It was, I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. Talk to a tree if it stands there long enough. Mm -hmm. And um, this is where the transition comes again. My oldest son was getting ready to graduate from high school. And I gave him that that great speech that parents give. Uh, the world is your oyster. And uh, you find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. And then I realized I was a hypocrite. That wow. I was doing what was safe. I was doing what I knew. Um, and I was really building other people's businesses that weren't going to benefit me. And so I There's made no long-term benefit for you. To no be long-term benefit. Yep. So I made a very hard choice and I went back to school. Okay. And when is, uh, so, uh, so he graduated in 2014. 2000. Okay. Yeah. All right. So 2014, uh, he left for college and I made the choice to go back to school. So this is also the year that I turned 40, mm -hmm. and um, it was a major milestone for me. Um, I didn't feel like I had any direction. I didn't really know what my course was going to be, but I knew I had to make a change. Not too many 40-year-olds, probably, <laughs> in the freshman class or whatever class you were you yep. were enrolled in at the time. But right. So, uh, so this is, is this still in the Charlotte area or I'm, I'm outside of, I'm in Gastonia, uh -huh. North Little Carolina, Gastonia. Yeah. about 30 okay. miles outside of Charlotte for those mm -hmm. of you that are not familiar with it. And, um, so I go to the community college, I enroll and I realize, sister, you're getting ready to do this all over again. The very thing that you're trying to get away from mm -hmm. you're doing, you're going to find you, you know, a, a cubicle and set up shop. And so I had a conversation with a very good friend of mine and um, I said, when you, when you think of me, what do you see? Um, these are people that I know for 20 plus years, people who know the good side of me, the bad side of me, the ugly side of me, the side with makeup, the side without makeup. And I said, what do you see? And, and she said, something with people. And I said, well, thanks for narrowing it down. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, what about being a fitness instructor? And I said, oh, girl, you're getting tired <laughs> just, just thinking about that, getting out of breath. She said, well, what about writing a book? And I said, well, what am I going to write about? What not to do at 40? Mm -hmm. And she joked and she said, well, I'd buy it. And I said, well, okay, well, that's not going to help me right now because I need a job. I need a career. I need something. I'm starting all over from scratch. And she said, what about, what about hair? I said, what about hair? For those of you that are listening to the podcast, I have very, very short hair. Well, they'll see the picture. Uh, right. You know, I have very, very short hair. I had longer hair at the time, but... I said, I've had short hair for about 15 years, and I have boys. Like, I don't mm -hmm. even know anything about hair. And she said to me, um, I'm pretty sure it's just like a mechanic. They'll teach you everything you need to know. So I say, okay. And it's kind of this thing that's kind of, you know, roaming around in my spirit. It's kind mm -hmm. of rolling in the back of my mind. And I, I, I go, I get off the phone, and, and it's just, it won't let me go. And so I make a phone call, and I reach out to the local hair school, which is uh, the Paul Mitchell School, Gastonia. And I call and I say, hey, do you take the GI Bill? And they're like, hmm. yeah. And I'm like, what? Yeah. You take the GI Bill? I say, all right. So I, you know, I'm like, I, want, I don't even know where this is. And I pull it up and it's like literally around the corner from my house. And so um, now- Would that have been a deal breaker if they had said no? Do you, had you even gotten that far in your thinking yet? I knew that was the only way I was going to be able to go back to school was okay. the GI Bill. All right. Now, I say it was around the, the, the corner from where I lived because I, was li I had lived in, in Dallas, North Carolina until my son graduated from high school. And then I thought, I'm going to start all over again. I feel bad. I, I should backtrack. And I no. moved to Greenville, South Carolina. Okay. And so when I made this choice, um, I was still considered a North Carolina resident. So I had to go to school in North Carolina to utilize my GI Bill. Okay. So I enter, I enter um, and take a, a, a tour of um, Paul Mitchell Gastonia. And I, I remember Shelby Myers, I said to her, hey, listen, I'm a sure thing. Like, I've got funding. You don't need to wow. You don't need to razzle dazzle me. Like, it's, I just really need to know if this is the thing for me. And she says, well, okay. And, and she says, well, what do you need to know? And I said, well, how would this work? If I was going to do this, how would this work? Yeah. So she shared with me the curriculum. She shared with me the pace of things. She shared with me the hours. And I said, but I don't know anything about hair. I was going to say, you've never cut hair a day in your life, right? Nope. And she said, don't worry. We're going to teach you everything you need to mm -hmm. know. And I said, oh, it's mm -hmm. a sign. Yeah, right. You heard that advice before. 
I signed the paperwork that day. Mm-hmm. Um, that was in December, and I was going to start school in January. So, mind you, I backtracked for you. So, I'm in I'm in Greenville, South Carolina. I have yeah. to finish up my my semester in college that I've again been driving back and forth to Gastonia. I uh, when I enrolled in school and started, I continued living in Greenville, South Carolina, and I was driving an hour and a half each way, so three hours in the car every day. Wow. Um, I finished and going to school all and day going to school yeah. all day and I finished in 11 months um, in that time I learned so much about myself and I learned that the very thing that I thought was a curse my gift for gab was really <laughs> <laughs> it really was my gift yeah uh-huh. and I remember thinking all my adult life growing up when I would hear people say what is your passion and I would hear people say people are my passion I would say think that's a Mm cop-out but what I learned in those 11 months that I was in school um, and mind you it was not easy to go back to school at 40 I was the oldest person in my class by 10 years which which the cosmetology school or yeah the cosmetology school Um, I was going to school with my son's classmates Wow. so it was a an emotional journey and it was a journey of self-discovery and so when I graduated from school I remember having a Uh, counseling like where are you gonna go what are you gonna do now and I said I don't know but people are my passion Mm -hmm. I felt I felt empowered to say that and so um, I decided to extend my education and go for um, instructor training and so I spent um, I committed to another um, seven-month program so during and so you've still not really worked in a salon this is where I'm getting ready to say I got to do something yeah and I gotta start making money, and, mm-hmm. and so um, I said I don't know what to do. And I'm, I lived in uh, Greenville, and there was a Sport Clips right around the, the corner from me. It was um, a Go- Team Gozier store, and it was in Cherrydale, South Carolina. And I stopped in. Someone had had shared it with me along the way, and so I stopped in and I said, you know, what's this all about? And uh, my manager at the time, Dallas Hinton, uh, was amazing. When I say this woman was amazing, um, she's the same age as my oldest son. And when I say she (laughs) took me by the hand, she took me by the hand. I worked in her store um, part-time, continued making the drive back and forth to Gastonia, and then uh, graduated with with instructor. And my plan was to stay in South Carolina, but I felt led um, to return to Gastonia. That was about the time that um, my team leader was finishing the Gastonia store, and there was an opportunity. And so to be a key uh, key holder. No, I started as a very, very, very part time stylist, just about 15, 20 hours because I was still finishing up the tail end of that instructor. Um, So after that, I was um, promoted to shortly after that, I was promoted to assistant manager. And then uh, through a series of events, I was promoted to manager. And what's the store number? Um. NC-121. Oh, of that one? Okay. Yeah. NC-121. NC-121. And I uh, then was when we opened up our fourth store. So we kind of grew overnight. We had our original store, NC-120, in Concord, outside of Concord Mills. And then our second store was NC-121 in Gastonia. And um, right about the same time, we opened NC-124 in Harrisburg, and we acquired... Uh, through a purchase and see 119 in Matthews uh, McKee Farms Road Mm -hmm. so we grew overnight on the kind of the same area a little for the most part um it's McKee Farms is a little spread out but we grew overnight from two stores to four stores and so um my team leader saw the opportunity to promote me and so um because I am dedicated to what the mission is uh I am currently managing the Gastonia location, the Concord location, and then acting in area manager. Oh, I, I thought, this sounds bad. I thought you were just now just an area manager. That sounds bad. I don't mean it that way. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize you were also physically managing two, two, locations, two locations plus the area manager. Yes, sir. So uh, so you don't lack for either ambition or adrenaline because you have you must have enough of both. Something I'm intrigued by as I'm listening to your story here, again, I don't have any preset questions. We we're just having a conversation. But uh, the first time you ever cut a client's hair, mm-hmm. how old were you? 40. Okay. So 
can that wasn't that long ago you know maybe a year or two whatever how long ago it was what was that was there an intimidation factor are you ner- is it nerves oh, or so much nerves okay i mean you're you're i mean you're kind of you're an army veteran you know you've been tested and all that kind of stuff in life and had all these these other circumstances that you've overcome but now you're cutting a See, the reason i'm intrigued by this is because if i'm sitting there in a chair and um, a stylist is cutting my hair, and she's around 40. I figure, ah, she's a pro. She's been doing this a while. I would never, it, so it was your client, were they, were they ever um, suspicious that maybe you're no. a rookie? Or All of my clients uh, share the same philosophy that you mm-hmm. do, that this mm-hmm. is something I've always done. Yeah. Um, because, because it's like putting on a shoe that I was meant to wear. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's really about the relationships that I build in the chair. The cutting is secondary. Yeah. I never know who is going to be placed in my chair. Mm-hmm. And just like in any other service industry, you think you're doing somebody else a favor, but it's really them who winds up blessing you. So, um, you know, I, I'm very lucky um, and blessed because I have so much life experience mm-hmm. that there really isn't a client that sits in my chair that I can't relate to because yeah. I'm somebody's mom, I I'm imagine. somebody's wife, yep. I'm s- somebody's ex-wife, mm-hmm. um, I'm somebody's sister, I'm, you know, I'm somebody's, I, I, I'm a vet, I've traveled all over the world, I've, I've been overseas, my very first duty station was in Germany, my oldest mm-hmm. son was born, I, I, you know, I have two sons, um, so there isn't a client yeah. that I really can't connect with. So I always say that I wished I had done this so much sooner, but I wouldn't be the same right. stylist. Yeah. I wouldn't be the same leader mm-hmm. um, if I had done it sooner. Mm-hmm. And so now is, uh, it, I, I don't want to say, is there anything next? Because it feels like your plate is so full, I can't even wrap my head around it. But <laughs> what, what do you envision you coming around the corner here? Um, I, I'm excited about the opportunities for our team to continue to grow. Um, you know, just like with any other person in leadership, you want to see the people for, that are um, under your your guide to continue to grow. So that's what I look forward to as far as um, my career as where I am. My career with Sport Clips, um, probably my biggest thing that I'd like to see happen is to uh, to tell my story on the stage at Huddle. Oh, okay. Oh, so what, what would that look like in terms of? Uh, is there a, is there um, uh, a session that we should focus on? Story, like unpack that for me. Well, uh, I think what you're doing right now is with the storytellers. Yeah. I think that's so awesome because um, these are the stories that we as leaders can share with our. And you want to do this live, or you want a recorded version? Which is your preference? I just want to wrap my oh, head around I'm, it. I'm live all okay. the way, all right. live so, and in the flesh. Okay, so um, you want a microphone and a podium, and yeah. you want to get up there, and we boom, you got five, ten minutes. Give us your sport clip story. Yeah, and, and you share that. what um, number one, what uh, the quality of leadership within this company. Can, can empower a person to do, mm-hmm. the right leader. And that's you know something that we as leaders have the ability to do every single day is to be a day maker. Um, we can either build people up or tear them down. Mm-hmm. And so you know my manager, my first manager, she took a chance with me yeah. and she invested in me. And I, not bragging, but am a success story. Yeah. I am a huge success story. Um, so I try to pay that forward. I see a lot mm-hmm. of, they may not be 40, they may not be on their third career, they may not have two kids, but I see a lot of wide-eyed, um, excited stylists who just need somebody to believe in them. Mm-hmm. So. And, uh, okay, well, I, I, I might know some people at Huddle that might, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not saying, I'm not promising anything, right? but the, you, you'd be surprised who they let on stage at Huddle. That's all I got to say. And, you know, people that have way less interesting there, things to say than, uh, than what you've got. Uh, so, okay, um, one more thing, and then I'll get to my, my 10 questions. Okay. What, uh, looking back, uh, as your career now has unfolded and, and you found – um, through your journey, what you were called to be, meant mm-hmm. to be, created for, uh, what piece of, of advice would you give others that are on their path to figuring things out in life? Never give up. 
because everything in you wants to tell you to give up, Mm -hmm. especially when we're, you know, in unfamiliar territory. Um, Starting over again, you know, for the third time in your adult life. And, you know, at 40, funny thing, crazy thing happens. You start taking inventory. Mm And you're like, oh, I'll don't. find that out when I get to 40, you know, one Thanks, day. Chad. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm 40. And so when you, you start taking inventory and you're like, I don't have this and I never did this and I didn't do this. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I think the next question you need to ask yourself is why not? Why haven't I done this? Right. And so, um, I yielded to the, to the still small voice and it, it led me in a direction. And, and uh, when I faced adversity, I really wanted to quit, but I didn't. Mm. And what's on the other side of it was sometimes I still can't. So, uh, yeah, all the folks 40 and over, they're listening and they're nodding their head like, yep, yep, we get it. And all the millennials or whoever's listening, it's like, oh, really? Is that what's going to happen? I'm never going to turn yeah, 40. Right, yeah. <laughs> so I, oh, it's awesome. Okay. All right, now we get to the now we get to the fun All stuff. All right, let's let's get to the ten questions, the random questions okay. that we're going to ask. Uh, no follow ups to you, whatever you you say. We live with. Okay. Number one, which superpower would you most like to have? Uh, mind reading. Mind reading. Wow, that's been popular. I feel like that was another one. So, or maybe you read my mind and knew that oh. was okay. Anyway, uh, what is your personal motto? Oh wow, guilty people will tell on themselves. Hmm. Okay. For any dishonest people in your life. All right. <laughs> now, I'm not throwing it out there, but, uh, other uh, number three, other than where you live now, where else in the world would you most like to live? Having been around the world, I think you could answer this question. Um, somewhere with a constant 70 degree temperature. Oh, it sounds like Santa Maria, California would be the perfect spot for you. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to okay. lure you away. I enjoyed to, San Diego okay. when I did visit right. there. Uh, who is a celebrity you would most like to meet one day? Mm. Most like to meet. They they have to be alive. No. You oh. Can meet them in the hereafter. Okay. Um, wow, I think you stumped me. Um, I don't know. I cannot believe that I'm I'm at a loss for words. Celebrity that I would most want because if you don't answer it i'll, I'll say mine and what it, okay what is yours elvis presley nice yeah the, the best singer of all time so absolutely that's who i'd like to meet i i don't i know i can't meet him here but you know hopefully once i get through the pearly gates he's there absolutely. waiting for me i'm still thinking okay that's fine we'll come come back okay if, if it comes all right to you. or if not you can take elvis for me uh which words or phrases do you most overuse <laughs> shut up. <laughs> no, really. Which words or phrases? That would be oh, okay. it. Shut up. Okay. Get out of here. Okay. Shut up. All right. Uh, what sound or noise do you love? Um, the ocean. Mm, me too. What sound or noise do you hate? Repetitive noise, like like the clock ticking when it's really oh, quiet, mm-hmm. like the same repetitive sound over and over again. What profession other than your own would you have been good at? <laughs> this is funny for you. Would you have been good at or at least have wanted to try? That you didn't. Is okay, just... so growing up, I always wanted to be an FBI agent. Mm. Um, but now, um, outside of what I currently do, uh, I would love to be a traveling motivational speaker. Ooh, okay. That kind of that kind of hits me right? deep right here. Right there in the fields. Yeah. Uh, what do you consider your greatest achievement? I have two. Okay. And they are my sons. And their names are? Ryan and Dalton. Okay, awesome. My son's name is Ryan. Uh, If heaven indeed exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Well done, my good and faithful servant. Oh, good. That's a great answer. And and, uh, he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And I want you to meet Elvis Presley. (laughs) Uh, Anyways, so that was uh, our amazing interview. Thank you so much uh, for joining us and uh, for all the... Uh, the thoughts and the wisdom that you had to share anything else any parting wisdom you have for us no um actually yes okay i'm honored uh to be a part of a great company that uh invests in the people that we have and uh builds the leaders that we have so um i I belonged at one time to the largest organization on (laughs) in the free world and so um this is quite second to it. When you're a soldier, it's it's a family. Uh, it's 
getting out was harder than joining ever mm. was. Mm. And so uh, I feel the same type of family camaraderie uh, connection in this company. Uh, I as love well. that. Well, you belonged there and you belong here, and we're glad to have you, Jessica. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Hope to have another good episode for you coming up.